is the eight inch metal ring for the Dreamcatcher that's larger. So I'm gonna give you sizes for the eight inch and then a smaller five inch ring. But the colors I chose for this were like this light green for the ring and then for the doily part, I did a light blue. And then for beads and feathers, I chose all of these colors because they were my granddaughter's favorite colors of feathers. Um, so what I'm gonna show you in this video is first, how to wrap the ring. Second, how to crochet the doily. Third, how to attach it to the ring. And then we're gonna hold together multiple strands of yarn and use the strands to connect the doily to the ring. So it's connected the strands just, I tied them on with knots and I connected the doily here, 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 and here. So the five points of the doily, and there's only eight, were connected with the strands that hang off of the dream catcher. So the part where I started and ended wrapping the ring is up here, and I used that for the hanger at the end. And I also tied that point of the doily with that those strands where I connected it. So the only uh, points you have left to connect are right here and here. And I suggest that you're gonna end in the middle of a loop here. So use a long, if you cut off a long strand here, you can use that strand to connect it here. And then you're only gonna have one more place where you have to, you know, sew in a strand of yarn connect it here and then come out here to secure it and then snip it off. So my other granddaughter, Ellie, loves pink. So I did this one, I used a light pink in here. I um, have my hangers here, right there's the hanger. And then right here, you see the, like the um, pink or peach color ring and then the strands that I did were just a bunch of different yarn that I had that coordinated with the um, with the colors and then I have links to everything um, below so that you could get these beads and I don't have links to the yarn it's just yarn that I have in my collection so I can tell you what weights I used so I'm going to show you a wrapping where I did on this one it was a real light sport weight I mean worsted weight yarn so I used two strands to wrap it now, if you have a heavier yarn, you could just use that to wrap the ring. But for this demonstration I'm gonna show you, I am gonna use two strands of a number three uh, weight yarn. So, um, but this one turned out really good. I think this one's my favorite so far. But maybe this new one here will be a favorite. So I, th I wanted to do something a little different. So, and I really wanted to do, I got a big box of different colored feathers and um, I'll show you the link to that. But I really wanted to use these and I pulled out a bunch of yarn and I decided that these colors here would be my strands. Also, I might change my mind about one or two of these as I go. This is the what I'm gonna wrap the ring with and then this yarn is what I'm going to crochet the doily with. So I may want to bring the strand from the ring into the strands coming, um, you know, coming down, holding the feathers because it's kind of nice to bring the same ring color down. So I might um, take this color out maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, it's real easy to switch out the colors. So here is my ring right here. Let me push this back a little bit. So my ring is right here. Now the goal is to wrap it. So I've got my inside strand here. This is the yarn I'm working with. And then I wanna pull from the outside strand. It really helps if you're standing up doing this because you can let the yarn fall. And it might be easier to just go ahead and, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold the inside. I got the strand from the inside right here. Then I'm gonna hold the strand from the outside. And I am going to hold them together like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put just a slip knot there to hold that together. But I'm going to wind it around my hand like this. 
or I could measure off. It'd probably be better to measure off about five yards and then wind it, but I'm just gonna wind much more than I need. See, I'm pulling the two strands and I'm rolling them together as one strand. It just makes the wrapping go a lot quicker. I know for the eight inch, uh, I think it was eight yards um, that it took. So this would probably be about, if you did six yards, you'd have plenty. So I'm gonna go off camera for one minute and I'm gonna get my ball um, wrapped up. So I have my two strands of yarn. I've cut it away from the skein of yarn and I wrapped it with a rubber band and I leave a length about, maybe this is about two feet and I wanna start it at that point on the ring. You'll see why in a minute. And then I'm gonna tie it to the ring like this and that'll secure it. Like that. Okay, now start wrapping it. So right now I just hold that knot and while I'm holding it, I'm just gonna wrap like this, this side of it. See, it's, it's um, short enough so that I could just pull the whole thing through. So it just helps get some of this ring covered. And you wanna pull that tight and you wanna hold on to this here so it doesn't turn around. And you want your loops to be close together so that you don't see the metal ring underneath. So you just keep wrapping like this. So it goes by pretty fast. And like I said, if you have, um, you know, thicker yarn, you may only need one strand. But two definitely speeds it up. Okay, so I want to have enough because this is going to be the hanger at the top. And I'll, I'll wrap the other side and meet, and it'll come around and meet this side. Well, I'll wrap from this side around and it'll meet right here. So when I get it over here, I want to make sure that that doesn't come out. So if you have like, a, um, like one of those little clips or something, you could use that but I'm just going to go like this and just do a little knot that I'll take out later just to hold it in place. So just like a slip knot right there is fine. So it's gonna like slide a little bit, but you can fix that when you come back. So now with the other side, with the bulk of the ball of yarn, you wanna go back and tighten this cause it may have come loose a little bit and you want to push them together this way and then you start wrapping with this and this because it's in a ball I just kind of like throw it into the ring and then pick it up and then I go back after about five loops and I pull it and I tighten it and I push it to that side so I just keep doing that until I get the ring completely covered And then when I need more yarn, I'm just gonna slide some out of this ball, being careful not to pull out too much. 
like that. And sometimes your yarn will get really twisted. So all you gotta do is like hold it um, from the top and then like this and it'll unwind itself. So I'm gonna go off camera and finish winding this and I'll meet you back at this point right here. Um, all the way back to this strand right here. And I've rolled up to this. This um, was kind of loose and I took the slip knot out and I just you just pull this and then you push, you gotta pull this strand. This is where I left off before with that strand and you wanna push these back, make sure you have plenty of loops in there to cover the ring. So I wanna make sure this is all tight and you can like push them like this. I'm rolling this towards myself. So another thing I want you to see is this, let me see, this is the strand that's gonna land up being the hanger. This is how twisted the strand got from covering the ring while I was off camera. So all I gotta do is hold it and it twirls to get that twist out of there. So then I'm good to go. So I'm going to do a couple more strands to cover, make sure that ring is covered up really good. But you have to slow it down to like one strand near the end because see how I only have a little space there to work in. So I'm going to hold that and I'm going to just do one strand at a time until that ring is covered really good. So I'm almost there. Like that, I think. So you wanna make sure that last one gets in there good. Maybe I do one more right there. So right like that. Okay, so I'm happy with this. It's all pretty tight all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want these to be tight. So if you had it really loose, the metal ring would show for sure. So I wanna leave about a um, maybe an 18 inch end or something yeah because I'm gonna leave quite a long end so I'm gonna take the more out of the ball and I'm gonna match it with the other side strand and I'm gonna cut it right here okay so now I'm pinching this to keep it from unraveling unravel unraveling uh, unraveling anyway I can't say that very good um, so right now I have a strand coming from this side and a strand coming from this side, which is perfect. So I am going to just tie a really loose knot here like this. Like that. And then I'm gonna just tighten that up. And I'm gonna come back and knot that again, but I'm gonna do it when I have a point of the doily that I wanna connect there. So for right now, this will secure this. And now I'm gonna show you how to crochet the doily. Doily is a real simple pattern. You start out with round one with eight single crochets with chain twos in between the single crochet stitches. And then round two is chain three, and then chain five, seven, and nine. So since this ring is smaller, we're only going to have to go two round um, three. And you can um, alter the number of chains a little bit. Like if you see that this is going to be too small, you can do one more round on this. Or if it's too big, you can do like maybe one more chain here so that it reaches over. But you really want this to be very tight because over time you don't want this to sag. So um, ideally, the tighter this goes on the ring, the better. And so what I'm talking about is you might be stretching this from like here. If this were the doily for this, 
you'd be stretching it from here to here. And by the time you get all eight sides on, it's gonna be perfect. So I'm just gonna show you how to do the three rounds for this ring. And then you're gonna have some variation too, depending on what kind of yarn you use here. But I'm gonna use like a sport weight yarn and a size F hook. And um, one other thing that I do in here is I join, when I get ready to do the last loop, I join like for the first round, I'll chain one and join with a single. And that puts me right here at the middle to start the next round. And when I come up here, there's a chain three. So to make that last loop, I'm gonna chain one and join with a double and that brings me right to the middle. And you'll see what I'm talking about um, as I crochet it for you. So let's get started. I have a slip knot on my hook. I'm gonna chain five. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch in the first chain to form a ring. So I'm gonna hold my finger right here so I know what the center of the ring is. And then I'm gonna bring it through here. I'm gonna be working eight single crochets into the ring. So while I'm working those eight single crochets, I'm also gonna be working over the starting chain. So I just do a single into the ring like that, chain two, single, chain two. So I'm gonna do this eight times. And you might have to push these around the ring so that they all fit in there evenly. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna do one more. Now this is where normally I would chain two, but I'm gonna join, I'm gonna chain one, join with a single crochet to the first single crochet to form the last loop. So I'm gonna single crochet in here and a single crochet is equivalent to a chain one when you're doing a turning chain. So the single is like having a chain one there and then I did chain one, so it's like having a chain two loop there. But this way, it puts you in the center of the loop instead of being on the side and having to slip stitch over. So now I'm just gonna work a single crochet into the last loop formed by the joining. So that means to, this is my last loop that I just made and I'm gonna put my hook in there, draw up and single crochet in that. So that's how I do that one. So now I wanna increase here, so I'm gonna chain three. So just one, two, three, and I'm a single in the chain two space, the next one. And single. After you chain three. Just make sure you're going in the chain two space. So right here you can see these are the chain twos and now these are the new chain threes of this round. Always wanna make sure you still have eight. Okay, so here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now for the last loop, I wanna land up in the center like before so I have to, um, for this, I'm gonna chain one, and then I'm gonna half double crochet in the first single crochet. So 
I have yarn over. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to draw a loop out. And then I'm going to draw through all three loops on my hook. And that's the same uh, width as the chain three. So see that? Like that. So now this is the probably the last round I need. I'm going to single crochet in here. And then this round, I'm going to chain five. chain five and then single crochet in the next loop Okay, so at this point, I want to see if this is going to work on my ring. So I'll bring it over to my ring and I'll stretch it to see if I think, I definitely need one right across from the other like this to, to kind of tell. But let me see, I think it's going to be just a little bit too small. I'm worried. Uh, what you could do too is have some uh, twist ties and you could go like this. This is just to kind of get an idea. It's going to fit. So I'm going to take this and this I'm doing one right across from the other so I can see what the stretch is going to look like. Okay, so right here. Now this loop hasn't been done yet, but this will be stretched over here. It's gonna be really tight, but I actually think it'll work. And if you think it's too tight, instead of a chain five, I could you could easily do a chain six. I'm tempted to pull it back and do a chain six. Um, I actually think I'm going to. So um, that's just something you'll have to gauge is very important not to have it too tight, but you want it really, you want it pretty tight, but probably not that tight. So I am going to go back here and I am going to just pull back a few of those loops. And instead of a chain five, I'm just going to do a chain six and I think it'll be perfect. Okay, so I'm back where I started. Here's my chain five. I'm just gonna add one more chain right here and then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go around with chain six. Two, three, four, five, six. To do the last loop, I'm going to chain three, 
because it was a chain six that I did around here, I'm gonna chain three, and then a double crochet counts as a chain three. So I'm gonna double crochet in the first single crochet to form the last loop. So right here, do a double, and then that way I land up in the center of this loop. Okay, so I'm gonna do a chain like this. I'm gonna pull the back side and then I'm gonna cut this, but I'm gonna leave a long end. I'm gonna go back here and cut because I wanna use this strand to sew the um, doily to the ring. I have these wonderful needles that I highly recommend. They're amazing. So they even help with beading, the beads. You'll see me using this for the beads. This is like this really cool needle. And then I also love the other needles. This one I use a lot, but I'll have links to everything listed. So now we're back. Oh, I'm gonna show you how to sew in that uh, first strand. So I fold this over the end, the eye of the needle like this, and then I, I, I they don't really want to tighten it. And then I'm just going to sew, go back in like that. And I'm a left-handed sewer, but a right-handed crocheter and right-handed with scissors. So that's why I sew left-handed. Okay, so there, then I lay it flat and I snip it like this. Okay, now to get this to the ring, this is the top where this strand landed up right here. So this, you wanna have the end right here just to the right of the top because and you'll see why. So this was just knotted. So you're gonna take the front strand of that like this and you're just gonna do more knots to secure that loop onto the hook. You could also take a needle and thread and sew the doily onto the ring. But I came up with this quicker way of doing it. So the doily will be like this and I'm gonna tie a knot like that. And then I wanna tie another knot. It helps if you know how to do a square knot. But the square knot is, the this strand is kind of higher than the other strand. So that strand wraps across the top like this and then it, you tie the knot like that. And so that was a, that's a square knot. I used to do macrame. So then this, you can like roll it down a little bit like this. So this you can leave till later. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the strands because the strands are what's gonna secure the doily. For the strands, I just try to, you know, I just, kind of get an idea of what's gonna look good together. So I like using the color that I used for the, um, to wrap the ring. So I have the leftover from wrapping the ring that I'm gonna use. So that's a double strand of that. And then I like to put in the color of the doily. So I only put in, I'm only gonna put in one strand of the doily color. And then I'm gonna use this gray and I'm gonna use two strands of the gray in my, these are all for the strands that are coming down off of the ring and they're gonna hold the feathers. Now this is a lot um, thicker. I just want one strand of this cause I don't want, and it's a darker color. So I just want one strand. And I don't think I need this strand because this is a smaller ring. So I think I, I'll have enough without using that color. But I definitely want to use this white color because it's a very interesting looking yarn and it's different from all the other strands. So this is the uh, make of how my strands are going to look, but it's going to be doubled. So what you want to do is hold these all together and then cut. So it's going to look like this and you can kind of plan it out like this. And these are gonna be about 18 inches long. I'll give the, the measurements will be in the directions. But so my strands will look like this. That looks pretty good. I don't know that I like both two strands of the gray. I don't think I need that. And this is, seems like a lot. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and take my gray out and only do one strand of the gray. So let me change this up a little bit. I had a plan for two, but I don't like it, so I'm gonna take it back. All right, so instead of two strands, I'm just gonna put one in there. There, I think that'll look a lot better. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this. You might want these a lot longer or you might want your shorter, but I would, mine is gonna be, let me get this all on camera. So mine is gonna be about right to here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut, I need five groups of these strands. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off camera and then I'll come back on. And I'm gonna use these strands to tie the doily to the ring. When you're doing the smaller ring, I think it's a little better to not do as many strands for the long strands that come off the ring. So I've decided I used a double strand of the yarn that came from the ring. So I'm gonna take this strand out because I think it's just gonna be a little too much. And if you cut your strands a little bit longer, you can always trim them when you uh, have to get done. So anyway, I'm gonna, this is one of my strands and I'm gonna take, this is my halfway point and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start like this. So I already got this one side attached. I'm gonna go to the one directly across from it right here. So I'm gonna have three loops here and I'm gonna have three loops there. And I wanna go at the center point over here. You can measure it, but I never do. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna bring this the strands through at the halfway point like that and then I'm gonna make sure I'm like halfway and then I'm just gonna tie a knot preferably a square knot so right like this I'm gonna take this all the strands like this I'm gonna bring it over like that and I'm gonna bring it through just tie a regular knot like that and I'm going to tie it real tight onto the ring like that I'm pulling it really tight then this one is higher than the other one this one is coming out low and this one's coming out high right here so this top the higher one here is going to go across the lower one like that it just sits lower right there it's just going to go across and then back in you're like you're just tying a knot but it if you look at it, it you can see which way the strands need to go so now I'm going to tighten that and that's a square knot and I'm going to tighten it really tight and that's the first strand even though I did it really tight I can still move it a little bit so I can just like slide that over because it looks like it's a little off center there so I can just move it around a little bit Okay, so I have that one on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the two adjacent ones. And then I'm gonna do, actually I'm gonna do the ones across like this and then I'll have all, you know, four symmetrically placed and then I'll do these two. So the next one, I'm gonna pull the extra blue out. And I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna make sure they're kind of if they're a little bit uneven it's kind of cool because they'll just drape down at different lengths so I've got it I get the quarter mark here and I've got one knot here pull that tight this one's higher so I'm gonna loop that around there over the top of the other strand and then bring that through like that and then that makes a square knot. And I'm gonna do that one really tight. And then I'm gonna push it to the outside. So then I'm gonna take my next group of strands right here. 
I'm gonna take out one of these blues. Hopefully it's not too much. If I decided that it was too much after I tied it, I can undo those knots and um, take some of the strands out. But I think this is gonna be, I think I'll like this. So now I'm tying the knot. the opposite side so here this is my strand I'm going to use to sew that there so I'm just leaving that be for now this is the top the hanger this is the opposite side over here on the right so I'm gonna tie my knot really tight here uh, this one's coming out higher here so that goes over the other one like that over the top of the other one and then through the back like that and that makes a square knot. It's really secure. Okay, there. Okay, so now we have the four corners done. So all we gotta do is these two, and then you sew this one, and then you gotta add some thread to get that one on there. But by using the strands to secure the doily, it um, saves some time makes the project a little bit easier. So you want, on the bottom you have, I designed it so you have five, the bottom five loops you have strands. When I first started doing these, I was sewing all the points with a needle and thread. Okay, so tie that one on. Tight. So here, one of the strands isn't tightening up, so I'm gonna to have to find it and pull it, which I just did. So I wanna make sure they all get tightened. And this one should be centered between the bottom one and that side one. So this goes over here, like that. You wanna tighten all the strands. You can pull them one by one to make sure. Okay, so that gets pushed to the down. You want to push, roll towards the outside like that. So now the last strand. It's right here. All right, so I wanna make sure it's centered between these two right here. You can make these really quick. The more you make, the faster they go. So there's the last one on there. So this is what we're looking at right here. You wanna roll these knots down towards the outside of the ring like that. All right, we're getting there. And this thing here is coming out towards the front and I want to I want kind of want it to the back. So I think to take care of that, all I got to do is make another knot, bring that strand to the back like this. And then tie another knot at the top of the ring. Yep, that fixes that. And then I'll make do a square knot. And then I will, this is gonna be the hanger up here. So what I wanna do is just bring it up several inches, maybe about six inches like this. Take all the strands and do like, pretend like I'm gonna do a slip knot, but I'm just gonna bring that strand all the way through like this. And then tighten that and cut that top and then the, that'll be done. Okay, so 
Not how we're left. It looks like this. It's getting there. I think I like the colors. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew this to here and put a strand on to sew that to that. So I'm gonna use my yarn needle and I'm going to put that on there like that. Then I'm gonna hold this out here and I'm going to go into, well, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna come around a couple of times to secure it to the ring. I wanna be in between the other two points. I'm gonna hold it up here so it doesn't slip out. I'm gonna come through here and go through some, and just wrap it a few times. If you can, get the needle into part of the yarn like that. Come back around, do the same thing. like that and then I'm gonna go bring it to the back and I'm gonna sew it back into the the chains like that. okay well, I'm gonna snip that off okay so now we only have one more to go on like that. So for that one, I need to get my yarn here. And put it back here. So for this one, it's different. I'm gonna go to the back and I need to secure the end before I start attaching it to the ring. So I'm gonna start here at the base of the the chain like this and I'm gonna leave that little tail sticking out because if I try to get it just you know in there just a little bit most of the time I just it just pulls out so what I want to do here is get this secured a little bit before I bring it up to the ring so now I'm going to bring it to the ring and I'm going to do one more little thing. Oh, that kind of pulled it out. All right, I'm going to do one more little thing like that. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap the ring a couple of times like that. I just want to make sure that end doesn't come slip out. So like this and I do the same thing that I did with the other side. Okay, then I'm gonna come this way and go through out the other side of the strand like that. Okay. Like that. Okay, and I'm gonna snip the beginning end and the end end like that. So there. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Okay, so now you have all your strands. So the next step I'm gonna show you is how to put all the feathers on. And before you put the feathers on, uh, it's a good idea to hold this up and look at what your bottoms look like because your feathers are gonna go close to the bottom and if you have like a strand that's super long that you want to, you might as well go like this one I think is going to be really long. I'm going to go ahead and trim it. And you don't want to trim it like super even. You want it just kind of uh, like this. You've got some shorter and longer sides. It, that I just think it looks better. And by the time you get the feathers on there, it's just like a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, just like a little wild look to it. I just think it looks better. But I'll come back on camera and I'll be set up to put the beads on and the feathers. This needle is perfect for this project and it comes out of this set um, and I'll have links to it below. 
So what I've learned uh, with by doing several of these is that beads are very different. They're, they're gonna have different size holes. So you're just, uh, it's ideal if you, these are great because they have, a, you know, a pretty good size. They go on this needle well. I don't think you want anything smaller than this. And if you have something bigger, you can always like, um, you're gonna be po like shoving the feathers up inside the beads. So some of these will fit better, like this one won't even go through it, and I'll show you what to do for those. But um, if you had a bigger uh, bead with a bigger hole, you might, you know, you might uh, be able to get this to go through. And if the bead is, if the hole is way bigger, then you could actually put two or three feathers in the same bead. But anyway, let me show you how I do this. So I start with each strand and I, each strand meaning each uh, five. So I was, look, I'm gonna just start working with this one strand. I'm gonna do two strands and I'm gonna use the, um, the lace, the yarn I use to crochet the lace. So I'm going to put this on my hook like this, just like this, and I'm gonna pick up five no, actually for this one, I'm gonna do four. So I'm gonna pick up four beads. It doesn't matter the colors, but I like to just kind of alternate them like this. And if they did, this one's not, well, it'll work. That was kind of a tight fit. So I'm gonna do four. I'll do another blue. Okay, so I'm gonna take this down like this. Let me take this thing out. Okay, so now I have four beads, and what I want to do is move them one top and I space them out on that strand. One down near the bottom, like this, and make sure I get it all on camera. And then these two will be like this. Then I start with either color, and I put the end of the feather into the bead. So that's a pretty good fit right there. And then I take the top of the bead. You might wanna put a little spot of glue in there, but I didn't use any glue on any of mine. And when you cut these, they go flying. So you might wanna hold the end of it when you cut it. So I did the blue. Now I'm gonna try a gray. This is way too big to go in. So I'm just gonna set that one aside. Actually, this one I probably shouldn't have put on here because I had trouble getting it on the needle. So I'm definitely gonna have trouble getting a small enough feather to go in there. But you just have to look through your feathers and find a feather that's small enough, like this one's small enough. So I just push it all the way up to where the feather starts and then make sure you don't cut the yarn in the back you just cut right here, you cut the end of the feather off. So I keep alternating between two colors. You could put any number of colors or any number of bead colors and feather colors, whatever. So, but if you make one of these, I really wanna see pictures of, you know, different color combinations, that'd be awesome. So I'm gonna do this one like that. And now my last one is gonna land up being the gray one. Ugh, this one's really tight. Okay, so my last one is not going anywhere. Okay. So you find the other strand of the yarn that I used for the lace, which is thinner than all the other strands, ideally. Okay, then you're gonna do the same thing. But what I like to do, and this is just a preference, is I started out with, I look at what how I did the other strands. So I started out with a blue bead, white, gray, blue. So now I'm just gonna start with white. I don't wanna match. So let's see, I'm gonna do white and then gray blue and white okay so i'm going to do the the color combination like this 
I'm gonna pull my yarn all the way through like I did before. But this time, I wanna try to offset where my beads are. So I'm gonna slide this one so it's a little bit lower than the top one over here. And then this one here, this one there, underneath that one. And then this one is longer, so I'm gonna take it down lower, like that. So then I started with a blue, so I'll start with a gray up at the top and just do the same thing. So now I need a blue. Like that. And then a gray. So I'm gonna go back to this gray that was way too big for this bead and show you what you can do. So I figured this little thing out. So I cut it to like about an inch from the where the feathers start like this. And then I go sideways like this and I just trim a little bit of the stem of the feather off. And it helps it slide through. You can also stick the scissors down in there like this so that it'll kind of curl in when it goes through the bead. So. Most of the time this works, but maybe, uh, yeah. So it's still not all the way through the bead. I want it all the way through the bead. Um, and I could cut a little bit shorter and I just need to trim a little bit more. So I am going to go like this and trim it like that. Just take a little piece out. It's like I'm taking a little sliver out like that. Have to go down but anyway you get the idea you can just trim it to get it to go into the bead so just like this okay I know it's a lot of work you could just keep trying to find feathers that'll fit but actually this is a great fit now because it went in really tight so not going anywhere and you could trim that off but I don't think it's necessary okay so then the blue one is last one that will not fit sometimes if you have a really big hole in the bead at the especially at the end you could just stick two feathers in there and then sometimes when it won't go through you can cut the top off like this and what's left actually ends up going through or I might have to trim it a little bit um, these white ones seem a little bit um, smaller in general. I thought about, well, no, I'm not going to say that one. I have a lot of tools, so I thought about drilling out a bigger hole. Okay, maybe this will go through. Okay, perfect. There. Okay, so this, this um, strand on this side is done. That's all I do is I put feathers on two strands. But you could put more feathers on uh, more strands. You could have more, uh, you could have bigger beads on the bigger strands, just however you wanna make it. So it's really a flexible pattern. So I think I've shown you everything I need to show you to make this project and hopefully uh, you will have great success and um, I just have really enjoyed making these and I hope you do too. Thank you for watching.